A glowing collection of UV reactive glass in your home is a stunning intersection of modern lighting trends and artistic history. My goal is to teach others about these remarkable products. I'll be sharing my passion, my enthusiasm, and my knowledge for glowing glass to help foster the next generation of glass collectors. In this episode, we'll be focusing on finish, more specifically, the semi-opaque marvel, satin glass. It can be called satin, frosted, or etched, but overall the look is relatively the same. The smooth and shiny surface of the glass is worn away with tiny abrasions. This gives it a very soft appearance with a semi-translucent effect. Today, we'll be talking about the different ways to finish and texture glass so that it has a frosted effect. There are several ways to create this effect, and we'll go over the three most common. Satin glass, or all-over frosting, etched glass, and sandblasting. According to Wikipedia, the satin glass technique was pioneered in the 1880s by both England and the US. It's a chemical treatment that gives the glass a misty, semi-opaque look. After a new piece of glass is cooled, it will be exposed to acids that eat away the smooth surface. Once washed off, the glass has a smooth, satin, or matte finish. Etched glass uses a similar concept, but the acid is applied in specific areas using patterns to create elegant designs. Jonathan Furman from the Michigan Depression Glass Society has an awesome video that describes the etching process. He provides a detailed demonstration that explains how etching plates and wax were used to create intricate patterns. You can find a link to his video down below. Finally, sandblasting can be used to create a similar look while providing more detail. In this video from the Fenton Glass Factory, the worker is using a sandblasting booth to enhance this design with satin details. With sandblasting, an air compressor will force fine grains of sand against the glass surface to wear away the outer layer. The finished product will be a mix of both glossy and satin glass textures. Now that we've gone over the more common types of glass frosting, I'd like to show you a few examples from my collection. Custard glass can also come in a satin finish. These are both Fenton custard glass pieces. However, this bell has a satin finish while the bowl still has a glossy glass texture. In the 1970s, Fenton made lime custard glass along with a variety of other colors. I find these pieces pretty frequently in stores and online. Though they do exist, it's not as common to find the same type of Fenton lime custard with a smooth, glossy surface. Though I don't collect pieces from this line anymore, these were some of the first ones that I added to my UV glass collection. It isn't too common to find satin cadmium glass, but this imperial glass peach blow vase was a perfect example to share with you today. The Amberina style glass contains cadmium, which causes it to have a golden glow under UV light. This pin tray was sandblasted in the Czech Republic last year for the VGCI convention held in Pittsburgh for 2021. As you can see, the glass is both satin and glossy, with the satin portions providing the most detail. Some of my favorite examples of satin glass come from Tiffin Glass Company, or US Glass, but they were really just the same company. <laughs> They were really well known for having a large variety of different shapes that came in satin, as well as a painted finish, like this. Painted satin glass was all the rage for a while, as you can see from these original manufacturer catalogs. Though they would use similar molds, each was adorned with a different ornamental detail. It isn't that uncommon to find these glowing satin beauties in antique stores around the United States. My earlier example was purchased at a local flea market in the Pacific Northwest. My obsession with tip and satin glass started when I found this baby in an antique barn. <sighs> it was on the top shelf, covered in dust. I didn't recognize even what it was, and I hit it with my UV flashlight, and it was so bright. It was crazy. I, I mean, I insta bought it like right then and wouldn't let it go when we were in the store. And when I took it home and started cleaning it, I started to notice that the finish on it was different than other satin glass that I had seen before. There was like a, a micro abrasions that made it have this brilliant shine in light. 
The finish on Tiffin's satin glass seems to reflect light differently due to the slightly rough surface texture. Tiffin used sulfuric and hydrofluoric acids to create a satin finish with a brilliant shine. As we look closer, you start to see that the surface is frosted, yet still reflective. This frosting technique still gives it that satin sheen that satin glass is named for. Ready to see some more from this series? Here is my collection as of this fall. Though my collection seems large, it's nowhere near complete. I've even added five additional pieces since the initial recording. The distinct bright yellow color of the glass always gives away this line. I would call it a true canary yellow. I find the pattern to be extremely classic. With minimalist style, it effortlessly fits into any modern aesthetic. Under a UV light, that surface texture shines a vibrant green that spreads throughout the entire glass piece. This stunning, impactful appearance is yet another reason why I continue to build my Tiffin Satin Glass collection, and I am still discovering all of the different shapes to collect. If you find yourself wanting to know more about this manufacturer, I would highly recommend this book. U.S. Glass Company, Decorated Satin Glass and Lamps of the 1920s. This was put together by the Tiffin Glass Collectors Club. It contains pictures from their own collection, as well as images of the original U.S. Glass catalogs. This little baby helped me find a bunch of pieces that were missing from my collection. If you're a glass collector, I would highly recommend picking up this or any other resource book. So, what'd you think? Did you like satin glass? Do you want to collect it yourself? Do you hate it and you never want to see it again? Well, I hope that after watching the video, you're able to at least identify it whenever you're out hunting. If you haven't had a chance to, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel to help support it and keep it going. I'm Paul from Glass in the Dark, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.